So in this video, I'll talk about uh, phenomenology and grounded theory. Specifically, I'll briefly uh, describe, briefly define both of these uh, methodologies. Uh, then I'll talk about some similarities between the two, because there are many similarities between the two, and that's uh, precisely one of the problems. Um, and then I'll talk about differences and try to help you uh, decide which one to choose for your study. It is such a difficult topic, it's such a difficult question. What is the difference between phenomenology and grounded theory? Or which one should I choose for my study? And uh, several of you asked me this question recently, uh, prior to our private tutorials, and I really had to prepare for this. So I really had to brush up my knowledge of methodologies and look into some literature and discussions just to, uh, to make sure that I know exactly how to help you. And what I found there uh, kind of made it clear to me why you're asking me these questions, because there is hardly any clarity in these uh, discussions or descriptions. Hardly any clarity. Uh, so it is quite easy to understand these separate, uh, uh, these separate methodologies, but then whenever a question is asked, what is the difference or which one should I choose, there is hardly any clarity. There are things, I, I have a feeling that people and authors, sometimes just private people and, and online forums, they just focus on what they know, but they don't necessarily answer the, the question of, of what's the difference. So they, uh, they will cite things like in phenomenology, the researcher uh, tries to distance him or herself from the data, from the study, tries to be objective and, and avoid researcher bias, for example, which is uh, true, but it's true for any other, any other approach as well. It's not something specific to phenomenology, it's just as true for uh, grounded theory or most or if not all other methodologies uh, and there are other things like that that uh, so so other things are being mentioned that are not necessarily uh, helping to understand the difference then uh, it is often explained that uh, phenomenology is a philosophical approach or it's, it's um, originated in philosophy and grounded theory in sociology so another thing that it's probably important and, and maybe to some, some it will be important, but again, to answer this question of what do I do, which one do I choose, uh, it's not really that helpful to know these things. So, so what uh, is the difference? When you look at the published studies on the other hand, and I guess that's a kind of a good news for you, uh, when you look at the published studies, uh, so you may compare uh, studies that adopted phenomenology as, as their methodology, uh, to studies that adopted grounded theory. When you compare these studies, uh, those studies that adopted grounded theory could easily pass as a phenomenological study in most cases. And those that adopted and claim that they followed phenomenological approach could easily be perceived as a grounded theory study. So I guess the reason is, uh, is well, uh, good news and bad news. Bad news is that, again, it's so difficult to distinguish between the two, differentiate between the two. The good news is that, uh, if you conduct your study in a, in a, in a good way, in the, in the right way, accurate and valid uh, way, then uh, it's hard to argue that, oh, oh wait, this is not supposed to be, this is not uh, phenomenology, this is grounded theory or vice versa. So, uh, so you, you shouldn't be that worried about, about this. But of course, you do want to know and understand the difference. So now let's briefly talk about both of these uh, methodologies. So, uh, to define phenomenology, and it's probably something you may have heard before, is that generally phenomenology uh, refers to, to methodology, or some people argue it's, it's just philosophy underlying methodology, but let's stick to methodology. And phenomenological studies aim to understand lived experiences. So that's something that you probably heard because it, uh, this, this term appears in, in all definitions of phenomenology, lived experiences. So uh, the aim is to reduce, uh, to have a, a group of people to understand uh, who lived through certain experience and then to understand these experiences and find shared characteristics to reduce these experiences to something that they have in common. So that's, that's how normally, how usually phenomenology is being defined. And then uh, the aim of grounded theory is to, uh, to develop a theory of something, a theory. As I said many times in my other videos, this theory doesn't necessarily have to be an actual theory. A theory may actually mean uh, a detailed description or detailed understanding. So the aim is to develop, to explain something that's happening through this kind of a theory or detailed explanation. Okay, so this is confusing. Maybe you're now thinking, can we not develop 
a theory of a lived experience, for example. And yes, we can, and some people suggested to merge these two methodologies, they suggested to have studies which are uh, based on uh, grounded theory approach and, and the underpinning philosophy is phenomenology. So that's just too much to, to take in at once, so I won't even go there in this video. Let's try to understand uh, the similarities as you between these two approaches. So as you just heard from my definition, they do kind of sound similar. Both of them are about uh, trying to understand something, uh, trying to explain something. Both of them, in fact, both of these uh, of these methodologies are uh, strongly focused on individual, you know, individual experiences, individual people on s some kind of very subjective experiences. Both of them want to understand individual experiences. Both of them want to understand real situations. That's another thing that somebody said on the forum that one of them understands, tries to understand real situations. Both of them try to understand real situations and both of them, the researcher is very uh, close to the participants. Uh, they are very interpretive. At the same time, the researcher tries to, uh, of course, like I said, control researcher bias. Uh, in both of them, in, in order to increase the trustworthiness of the study, the researchers may involve the participants to some extent, or even if it's just for member check-in for, for clarifying the meaning. So, so these are similarity, similarities. Again, uh, they do sound very similar. So. So now let's talk about differences, finally. So that's what you want to know. So how do we choose, how, how do we understand a difference and how do we decide which one to choose for our study? So the first difference that I will discuss and also the probably the, the least clear uh, difference, the most vague difference and the one that you probably already heard about, but let's uh, still discuss this difference, is the uh, the overall purpose of the study or the representations, uh, the representation of the findings. So, so what is the output, what you're trying to do with the findings. So it is often argued that uh, the aim of uh, the phenomenological research, phenomenology, uh, again, is to understand lived experience uh, of a specific group and not any other group. So you want to understand how a group of people who have a common uh, experience, how they lived through that experience. And again, as I said, reduce that to, to something that these experiences had in common. So your purpose is to gain the essence of the experiences. That's, that's another uh, commonly used phrase, the essence of experience. And the purpose of grounded theory is to develop some kind of an explanatory theory of a certain social process. So, uh, so this is, uh, as I said, often being mentioned and uh, it is sometimes argued that this uh, this nature of what we are exploring is also important. So, so the nature of what's being explored in grounded theory is it is something uh, dynamic, it's a process that we are trying to understand and develop a theory of. So for some of you, this alone, uh, this characteristic, this first difference may actually make sense. And some of you, in some cases, uh, I, I just realized how this sounds. For some of you, it may actually make sense. I hope it makes a lot of sense to most of you. But what I mean is that uh, some of you have already a certain idea for your study. And sometimes it is clear uh, fr from hearing this first uh, difference between grounded theory and phenomenology, it actually becomes clear and, and it's, it's so obvious that, okay, I actually I want to understand how people and this institution or this kind of a job live through, let's say, lo uh, losing their, their relative or something like that. So, so sometimes it just this definition actually reflects your aim of, the, of your study so closely that straight away you know, okay, I think phenomenology uh, is the approach that I need to follow. So, so that's good. So that's good news. And uh, some of us are lucky enough to have this kind of a, uh, to be in, in this kind of situation. In other situations, like I said, in other contexts, it's still not clear because usually you can argue that uh, that a certain situation can be both explored, uh, perceived as a lived experience, and also something that a grounded theory uh, could be. Uh, could be applied to. So, so I understand that uh, some of you may still be confused, so let's look at other differences. And I think it's even more important to understand these differences because rather than thinking about these purposes and aims and representations of our data, which is something that most, uh, most books and most discussions usually focus on, I think it's much more important to look at the structural elements of both methodologies because this is how they are different. Uh, if there is, uh, if there are certain procedures in grounded theory, for example, if you don't follow them, if you don't use them, if you don't want to uh, 
structure your study in that way, this simply means that it's probably not the methodology that you want to follow. So that's, that's the easier approach rather than really uh, putting them uh, side by side and, and thinking how they differ. So one of these uh, structural, so to speak, differences is the data collection uh, stage, data collection. So how you want to collect your data. And here uh, the first difference is that in phenomenology, usually uh, the primary data collection very often and more often than not, I would say uh, the only data collection method is interview, qualitative in-depth interview. And in grounded theory, the aim is to uh, gather data from all kinds of sources. Again, this doesn't mean that you cannot have a grounded theory study that is based just on interviews. So that's again another, another vague statement, another confusion. You can still do this, but uh, often it is also uh, the case that grounded theorists collect data from different sources. There is a statement, I can't remember who made that, but probably one of the uh, grounded theory gurus out there, uh, that everything is data in grounded theory. That's a common statement. Everything is data. Uh, therefore, grounded theorists often, in addition to interviews, they collect diaries, they, they do observation. Uh, also, a very typical thing in grounded theory is to use memos, so they are like, like researcher uh, journal or diary, uh, to use memos and then incorporate these memos into your data. So literally everything is data for a grounded theorist. And the interview itself, if you do focus on an interview, in phenomenology very often the interview is uh, even more open-ended than in grounded theory. Again, this is not to say you cannot have a relatively open-ended interview in grounded theory, but for phenomenology studies, uh, usually it's, it's a very common characteristic that there is a very open-ended interview. Some even argue that there are only two or three questions, but they are extremely open-ended. So you're literally asking them, tell me how you lived through a certain experience. So, so that's, uh, that's another uh, characteristic related to the data collection. And another uh, one of the structural differences is sampling. So in phenomenology the sample is tends to be relatively small and it's usually kept small on purpose because again you want to have a relatively homogeneous sample, you want to have people who lived through a certain experience. So, so you have a, a good idea of who they are, who you need for your study. So you're keeping the sample small. Uh, by small I mean uh, again there is no no rule for what kind of sample is you know ideal? There is no fixed number in qualitative research, as I as I explained in several videos. Uh, however, it tends to be I would say on average between five and fifteen participants for phenomenological studies. And in grounded theory studies, the sample tends to be bigger. Uh, so uh, again, I've seen a grounded theory studies that had fifteen participants, so so it's, it is possible. But on average, it tends to be bigger and I would say it's somewhere between 20, 25 and all the way to let's say 50 or 55. I've seen uh, studies that have about 50 participants. Again, it's, it's a little bit extreme but it's not uncommon. I would say the average number tends to be somewhere around 30 or 35 and like I said uh, there are studies, uh, my own PhD study included, uh, which had uh, less than that. So I had 20 participants in my study and I've seen studies that have 15. But there are studies that have analyzed other studies, so a number of, of published theses and, and articles, in order to, do, uh, to come up with a number, uh, average number of participants for uh, specific research methodologies and they do find that in grounded theory this number is higher. So it's just on average the number tends to be higher and and this kind of uh, leads to another very specific uh, and common characteristic of a grounded theory study, uh, namely a theoretical sampling. So theoretical sampling, I talked about theoretical sampling in one of my recent videos. Uh, theoretical sampling is, based, uh, is, is basically sampling that follows your normal purposeful sampling. So you start with your purposeful sampling, you're recruiting participants for your study, and then you start to analyze uh, the data. As you analyze the data, and you start to develop some kind of a suspicion or hunch or I don't want to say hypothesis because it's not a very qualitative thing, uh, but generally your theory or explanation starts to develop, uh, then this gives you an idea for who else you want to recruit in order to further explore that theory or understanding. So then you go and recruit more participants and this is called theoretical sampling because it's a, a sampling based on an emerging theory. So that's a very, that's a very, very common uh, element uh, 
important element of grounded theory. So not only does this result in this large sample, like I said, because usually you start with, let's say, 20 or 15, but then as you recruit more and more for your theory, you may end up having, like I said, 30 or 40 or even 50 in some cases. So that's, so that's number one thing to know. And number two thing is that generally this aspect of a study, of grounded theory study, is a very characteristic element of grounded theory. So again, a theoretical sampling is not something you find in in uh, phenomenology, for example. And this is important because, like I said, it's probably easier to focus on these structural differences in order to determine which one, uh, which, uh, which approach you will be following, rather than talking about these uh, rather theoretical differences between these two uh, methodologies. And finally, another difference uh, relates to your uh, general relationship with the previous knowledge and relationship with the previous literature. So, uh, grounded theory, as you may have heard, one of characteristics of grounded theory is that uh, ideally or traditionally, the researcher doing grounded theory study uh, doesn't uh, really read that much literature, which may sound a little bit surprising, but that's, that's what it was traditionally. The, uh, the aim was that, uh, well, firstly, there is not much literature on this topic, so that's a very common characteristic of grounded theory studies and the reason why people may want to develop a theory of something because there is not that much in the literature so so the topic is uh, under researched that's a very common characteristic so that's the first reason why you may not read a lot uh, literature because there is not that much to read in the first place and secondly they don't want to be influenced so that's very important they don't want to impose their knowledge Again, as I said, uh, this is true to any study, but in grounded theory, this is particularly important, uh, as especially traditionally, and I, I, I want to stress that. Uh, in traditional approaches, this was very important. You didn't want to have uh, you know, any knowledge that would uh, possibly affect you know, the way you see, see the data. However, as I explained in one of my videos in which I uh, talk about myths uh, uh, about grounded theory, you can find this, uh, the links to that video probably on your screen now. Uh, this is hardly possible nowadays and grounded theorists uh, nowadays they admit that it's very, uh, it's hardly a practical thing uh, to do, not to read any literature. Can you imagine that? Especially if you're a student. So it's not really possible. However, uh, still there is, you know, there is still focus on that element and although it's recognized that it's not possible to not to read any literature, it's still argued that you should be very cautious and very careful in your, you know, in your reading, basically, and uh, kind of keep it to the minimum and then come back to the literature once you've done your study, you develop your theory, then you want to look at the literature and see how this, you know, thing that you develop positions itself in, uh, in the context of existing literature. And in phenomenology, the approach will be just as normal. So there's nothing that specifically characterizes phenomenology in terms of how you approach the literature, but instead there are such procedures that characterize uh, your approach in grounded theory. So again, so that's how you distinguish between these two. And finally, just a quick word about data analysis. Again, uh, probably too much attention has been paid to uh, data analysis in the discussions uh, about the differences between the two methodologies because you're not choosing a methodology uh, think by thinking about how you're going to analyze the data, but but they do have their own approach as well. Basically, phenomenology will both of them will still involve some form of thematic analysis, so don't worry about it. Some people refer to IPA analysis, but it's basically again based on thematic analysis. When it comes to grounded theory, you probably heard about their own uh, detailed approach to coding based on line by line codes and then their own terminology such as axial or open coding or focus coding. So that's again, it's just uh, something if you're doing a grounded theory, you're expected to talk about these things in grounded theory terms. But essentially, the analysis will involve coding, will involve some kind of thematic analysis in both cases. So I really wouldn't worry about it just yet before you choose uh, a specific methodology for your study. So I hope that I helped you. Uh, understand some of the differences, some of the similarities. I hope that it was not too confusing. Again, as I said, the topic is very vague, is very broad, is, is very hard to talk about these differences and very hard to compare these two methodologies. But I do hope that you learned something new. If you did, please like the video. Uh, feel free to ask me questions in the comments. And if you require more detailed uh, attention and guidance, feel free to reach out and uh, book a session, a one-to-one -one session with me.